Okay, so in the last episode of Sci Guys Live, if you were here, you may remember that I gave a sort of throwaway comment, which was, if you force a left-handed person to write with their right hand, they could get brain damage. Ooh. It's, it's it true, is, right? <laughs> well, you tell it me is, it's true. The data is nuanced. <laughs> and, and so I thought I would sort of talk about our society's history with left-handedness and give some some clinical evidence for <laughs> that could suggest that that what i was saying was not entirely dubious so i got this fact from something i was reading during my research for split brains episode which was episode, Ooh, which episode? 40 40 40, 40. 40. Yeah. There we so go. that was about Four-oh. nine months ago and we were talking about as part of that a thing called brain lateralization your brain is is constructed out of two hemispheres and each hemisphere in most people they lateralize which means that each of your hemispheres takes on specific tasks and specializes in those tasks and doesn't do other tasks because, or does those other tasks less because the other hemisphere is doing them. And when you're combined in, mm. in sort of a neurotypical brain, the result is, is that you have access to all those things, but parts of your hemisphere are not doing those things. That makes sense? Yes. Yes. Uh, now, according to the American Psychological Association, around 90% of people are right-handed, and the remaining 10% of people are either left-handed or have some level of ambidextrousness, which means that they can use both hands. Only 1% are truly ambidextrous, meaning both hands are equally as good at everything that you would be handed in. Um, in left-handed people and in ambidextrous people, their brains are much less likely to be highly lateralized. So their brains are, the mm. hemispheres are, are much less likely to be specialized in tasks, um, meaning they are more symmetrical, meaning each hemisphere is more similar and there isn't as much of dividing of tasks. So this is true for 80% of, um, left-handed people and 95% of right-handed people are strongly lateralized. Um, so you can see this really big difference between left and right-handed people. Mm. Um, now, this type of brain... By the way, are any of you left-handed? No. 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 You know I'm not oh, left-handed. Sorry. Yeah. You know how I feel about them. I thought you were left-handed at one point. Me? No. No, 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 Luke. I thought Luke was left-handed. Oh, yeah. Luke does seem like a lefty. Why. He seems like a lefty. Yeah. Well, this is the interesting thing. There are cases where people are have a kind of traditionally... Um, traditionally... Um, unlateralized brain but they're still right-handed um but i don't know if that's me but there are cases of that yeah. um so over the centuries left-handed people have been discriminated against they have been Good. thought to <laughs> Corey. <laughs> <laughs> i don't like them why do you hate left-handed people i just so much? don't like them well okay here's, so here's a list of things that Corey believes about left-handed people <laughs> um, or more specifically have been thought about left-handed people over the centuries they've been thought to be witches they've thought be, thought to be possessed by the devil um unlucky evil mm. dishonest and stupid all um, true and the yeah. <laughs> stop <laughs> the majority of the tools that we create as a society, including knives and computer equipment and scissors and instruments and writing tools, um, and even the direction of writing in the West, especially, um, and even weapons designed for war, uh, were designed for right-handed people. The word left comes from the Greek lift, meaning weak. Ooh. What's really interesting <laughs> as well is that in many languages, left means bad. Um, so in Latin, uh, there's dexterous, uh, dexter and sinister, meaning right and left. Oh. Um, so you, from dexter, you've got dexterous, someone who's quite good with their hands. And yeah. from, uh, I think it's sinistrum, uh, you've got sinister, which means evil. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just really funny. All right, weak boy. Oh, look at you. You, you weak hand. Hey. You're so ineffective. <laughs> okay. So that meant that because of the fact that um, there was this sort of dislike of left-handed people, and also most of the tools we used and created in our society were... Um, for right-handed people, that was pretty common to force left-handed people to use their right hand. Mm. Uh, all the way up to even King George VI was made to change hands. So it wasn't just... He's the in king, the, though. In the... Sorry? So he's the king, though. So yeah, he's... Be, he wasn't expected to be the king. King oh, George okay. VI was not expected to be king. And so there was, it wasn't like necessarily a public-facing thing or like not wanting a left-handed king. They didn't expect him to be the king. Um, but they still made him switch hands. And the methods they used to do this were often like torturous and they included like caning, tying up a child's left hand 
and humiliating left-handed oh. children. Something I'm sure Cory is very used to. <laughs> I don't attack the children, just the I mean, adults. Not the children. The children can still change. <laughs> <laughs> if submitted to torture, tying up of the left hand and humiliation. Oh dear. Mm. Yes. Um, at one point, experts believed that left-handedness was associated with stuttering. Um, and then a little later, in the, in the late 1920s, they started to believe that it was the retraining of left-handed people which caused the stuttering, not the left-handedness. In a study of around that time, which is quoted in the National Institute of Health as well, they took 16 stutterers, 14 of whom were left-handed, forced right-handed, and were trained again to write with their natural hand. And according to that study... Uh, which admittedly is a small sample size and done nearly 100 years ago, um, apparently all of them either improved or were cured of their stuttering, which is a pretty bold claim, to be honest. Mm. Mm. Um, according to a study from the National Institute of Health, by the late 1940s, the connection between stuttering and retraining kind of evaporated. And this was sort of due, according to them, the National Institute of Health, in large part because of the growing dominance of psychoanalytic psychiatry which may be finding like other causes for um, the stuttering or finding other therapies or other cures for the stuttering some iowa researchers in the 1930s found um, connections between stuttering and weak hemisphere lateralization as we spoke about at the start which is also correlated with left-handedness now scientific american says about training to be ambidextrous so that's like regardless of which hand you are if you try to train your other hand so you're equally balanced in kind of uh, handedness um, it may be harmful to your neural development and may uh, and quote to attempt to tamper with this setup may invite psychological problems um, mri scans published by the journal of neuroscience suggested that converted left handers show larger surface area in the primary motor cortex of their non-dominant hemisphere indicating that basically the brain, the brain was plastic and had grown this section because of the being forced to um, use the non-dominant hand. They compared this against both left-handed people and right-handed people and left-handed people who had been attempted to convert but failed to convert. And the people who successfully converted all had this predominantly larger um, area of their brain for motor cortex in the motor cortex of their non-dominant hemisphere, suggesting that that part of their brain had grown in order to um, sort of deal with the retraining. Um, they also had reduced gray matter, which is a pretty important part of your brain, um, in the putamen, which is um, the part of the brain involved in regulating movements and in some kinds of learning. Um, so when I basically, basically the summary of this is when I said forcing right right handedness could cause brain damage, what I should have said, I've revised my statement here based on all the research <laughs> I have done. <clears throat> Here's my statement. I'm coming out onto the, onto the steps of my house. Um, the data we have is pretty clear that forcing right handedness changes the structure of the brain. It shows that our brains are incredibly adaptive to what we force them to do. At, but that it is possible that forcing this change may have psych psychological and neurological effects. It is also possible that it's not the switching, but the underlying differences between the brains of right and left-handed people, such as reduced hemisphere lateralization, which may account for some of the anecdotal and clinically observed psychological symptoms. Ultimately, the advice today is do not force left-handed people to retrain to their right hand. And that is my story. And that is <laughs> probably you. the <laughs> longest correction we've ever had on the show. <laughs> this, this, is, this is good because it's you taking something, a mistake that you've made, um, misinformation that you've accidentally, accidentally given out and gone over what was wrong with it and explaining the actual correct information. Yeah. But imagine if this was someone else that was giving out misinformation and you had to try and correct it. This is why mm. it's, it's very, very important to try and be very careful with what you say. Because it's very difficult to debunk. It takes a long time to debunk things that are incorrect. Yes. Yes. But good job. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs>